Get ready to ace your PE exam with this practice problem and solution video in this week's Pass the PE Exam video. In this example, we tackle a real world scenario that could show up on the exam, estimating concrete quantity for a canal lining. This question was created and solved by engineer in training Enrique Ivers and is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exam since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone. In this problem, we have a great real world example that might show up on the PE exam. We're estimating the amount of concrete that will be needed to line a canal. And we're told that the construction documents call for a 500 foot long canal lined with six inches of concrete for erosion control. We're also told that a 5% allowance is made for waste and over excavation. And then we're asked how many cubic yards of concrete the field engineer should order. And we're given the options of A, 350 cubic yards, B, 373 cubic yards, C, 392 cubic yards, and D, 410 cubic yards. This problem has several steps and potential snags, so let's think about it and then go through each one. So first we need to consider the cross-sectional area of the concrete at the base of the canal, the left leg, and the right leg. Second, we have to consider the distance the canal travels to find the volume based on that cross-sectional area. And then what we'll do is we'll take that volume and then multiply it against the waste factor to consider our waste factor. So first, our cross-sectional area of the concrete, that's the base of the canal, the left leg and the right leg. Uh, the area of the left and right legs are equal. We're shown on the schematic that uh, the canal is symmetrical, and we're given the height and told the slope of the legs is one to one. To find the hypotenuse, or the actual dimension of the leg, we must find the width. So the horizontal leg of the side slope, or the hypotenuse, is 10 feet times one over one. So this is really simple, but uh, if the slope were x to y, where y is the rise and x is the run, we would multiply the 10 feet by quantity y over x to find the horizontal distance. In this case, our slope is 1 to 1, and since we're multiplying by 1, the horizontal leg is the same distance as the vertical leg, 10 feet. Using this, we can find the hypotenuse, which is root 10 feet squared plus 10 feet squared, so the distances of both legs. We arrive at 14.14 feet, for the distance of the hypotenuse, and with that we can now find the cross-sectional area of the lining. So quantity 2 times 14.14 feet plus 12 feet for the base times the thickness, and we were told that, that thickness was 6 inches. So multiplying by 6 inches over 12 inches per foot, we arrive at 20.14 square feet as the cross-sectional area of the concrete required. Using this cross-sectional area, we can calculate the volume of the lining. We are told that the canal is 500 feet long, and we've just calculated the cross-sectional area above, so our volume is equal to the area times the length. And the area is 20.14 square feet, and the length is 500 feet. So multiplying those two, we arrive at a volume of 10,070 cubic feet. Now we want to convert this in yards because concrete is always measured in cubic yards. So using the conversion factor of 27 cubic feet to one cubic yard, we arrive at 372.96 cubic yards. Now it would be really, really tempting to take this 372.96 cubic yards 
and select answer B. After all, answer B is 373 cubic yards. This is basically 372.96 cubic yards. The PE would expect us to round answers in this way. But we're not quite done with the problem yet, so don't forget to take into account that 5% waste factor. We need to multiply that volume by 1.05 to take into account the 5% waste, and when we do so, we get 391.6 cubic yards. This rounds to 392 cubic yards, and as a fun fact, uh, this won't be asked on the exam, but in the United States, this would work out to be about 44 concrete mixing trucks, as each one typically holds 9 cubic yards of material. This is a quite the pour, very big pour. Anyway, we see that 392 cubic yards is shown as option C, and that is the correct answer. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. In upcoming videos, we will solve some more PE exam problems and talk about some different and tricky tips and topics that will help you and really could make a big difference in your exam result. Please consider subscribing to our channel here. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis. And please, if you do have a specific question, leave it in the comments section below this video and I will read and respond to it. And if I can't respond to it below the video, we may do a whole nother video just to answer your question. And I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.